Hello, my name is Peter Phelps, Phelps3D, and in this tutorial, I'm going to describe how to go from an image of your signature, first signature, to an actual 3D printed part. This, in this process, we will use um, Inkscape in addition to FreeCAD. So, what you want to do is you want to take a picture or a scan of your signature. In this case I would use just a regular ink pen. Don't use a felt pen. Um, the reason for that is even though you would think, hey, a nice thick line, that would be great. The problem is, is um, the felt pen bleeds into the paper and when you do the picture or your scan, you're going to have a very rough edges. So see how even this one has some really rough edges up here? That just occurs because the ink is going too far out of the off the bowl. But um, that will end up being something that you'll have to process or change to try to get it as clean of an image as possible for the tracing that the Inkscape will do. So that's going to be my first thing I will want to do. And I'm actually going to use a different program because Paint does not let me do too much in the, uh, the regular MS Paint does not let me change too much in the brightness and contrast areas. And then the new Windows 10, um, New Windows 10 Photos thing it doesn't quite come out as well as I would like it to. You can adjust your your brightness and contrast in it, but I'm going to use Ultimate Paint instead. But you can use just about any um, image program that you like. It doesn't matter to me. I just like some of the tools in ultimate paint. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by just cutting the image down to edit copy, edit paste this new so that it's pretty much just just the image itself. Take the image, photo, brightness contrast. And I'm going to go 50 in brightness. Contrast six. Maybe I'll bring this down. Okay. And you can preview it so you can see it, what, what it kind of looks like. And I'm going to say apply. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this as a GIF file and tell it to go monochrome and say save. Or well, let's go ahead and go bitmap monochrome save. And it will be my signature. And then I'm going to close that and open it back up. Now, do you notice that even though we said monochrome, it went gray and white. It did not go black and white. You want it to be black, so make sure you select black. You can use your little bucket paint tool. And change that to black. And then we're going to go in and we're going to spend some time trying to clean the image itself up. And you see these jaggies where it's really, there's a hole there, you want to clean that up. You want to make the lines as smooth as possible. 
Um, you can always use the white to erase things that might be sticking out. See like this one little dot out here? You don't want the little dot sticking out there. So, you might get rid of that. For the most part, you're going to try, try to also thicken up all these lines. So that they're nice and smooth. You don't want, you don't want where you've got these little itty bitty gaps. So you see here where you have a hole, a dot that's white inside the black. That's not good. You don't want that either. So you're going to want to go through, clean it up, make it nice and clean, and try to thicken them up a little. It'll make it better for the Excuse me, escape. If you want, you can use lines to, as long as you keep sort of the, the spirit of your signature. And anywhere like, like this where it connects, the other, you might want to thicken that up so that when you go to try to make a trace in your 3D print, the, the, the parts will be connected together. And this process here alone could take half an hour to 45 minutes or more, depending on how ugly the original scan is and how precise you want it to be. Using the line seems to be a little faster. Alright, so I'm going to pause because I'm going to be at this for a little while and then I'll come back Okay, so now when you get it to about where you want it to look, you can save it and then close the image editing program, open up Inkscape. Inkscape takes a little while to load. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Did I double click it right? It takes almost a minute or two. It's like, well, maybe only 30 seconds, but it seems like a If I don't get in trouble because I have the Voltron legendary defender on the background on my video. Come on, escape. I know I clicked you last time. Yeah. 
Okay, so we're gonna go file import my sign BMP open uh, bed from file. Make sure the smooth. I like using the smooth because it will smooth the lines out even more. So okay, move this up here. Then I'm going to make sure it's still select or to path trace bitmap and I'll update this say ok and close that now right now we have the path selected so we're going to move that out of the way I'm going to click the bitmap and delete it then bring the path back over here then we're going to file Save as, and I'm going to call this my sign, and make sure it's the SVG file. Say save. Then we're going to close this and open up FreeCAD. I'm going to actually switch over to parts and then go file, import, go to desktop, and we go open up the my sign SVG. Open. We're going to go SVG is geometry. Import. Okay, so now we have a whole bunch of paths that traced out our signature. We want to select all of the paths. Let's click the first one, press shift, click the last one, go up to part and say make compound. That combines all those paths into one piece. Now, right now that is just a 2D sketch or drawing. We want to make that a 3D part. So I'm going to say I clicked the extrude button up here. Then I'm going to go create solid. I'm going to make the length five millimeters and say OK. Oops. I guess I didn't have this selected first. Extrude, create solid. I could have done the selection right here. And that. Say five. Say OK. And you could do all sorts of different things with this. You could create some sort of jewelry item, maybe a tie clip. Uh, you could make it a sign to put on your desk with your own signature on it. Um, you can do all sorts of different things. But it all depends on what you're doing, what you're printing it in, and your preferences. So now, just to kind of give you a little hint, that there, from that point to that point, is 82 millimeters. Now, I was asked by a client if I could figure out how many characters to write in a signature to become so big or so small, and really it's going to vary greatly depending on what your resolution that you captured the image at, um, what the final image size is in Inkscape when you 
work in there. And that might be the easiest way to try to scale it slightly is to use Inkscape and then change from pixels to millimeters to try to figure out the size. But I'm not exactly sure. Don't quote me on it. I haven't done enough of these and had enough people try for me to really have a, a mathematical, okay, if you sign your signature and it is so big and then you use a camera that has 5 meg megapixels it's going to be this much. I, I I just don't have a clue. <laughs> it would, I would t probably have to have thousands of hundreds of samples just to even try to scientifically figure that one out. But this is currently 82 millimeters long. Um, I don't know what that was. Um, another thing you might want to know is, okay, Let's find, say you want to know a really thin spot from here to there. Okay, that's 1.22 millimeters. If you're trying to design this for shapeways to do it like in the metals or the, like the steel, it, its minimum thickness requirement is one millimeter. So this will pass that. But if you want to play with it and try to make it smaller, say you wanted to go for gold or silver, then you'll have to design it so that it still meets that thinness requirement or thickness requirement for the um, that material. In the case of the, their strong flexible plastic, it's 0.7 millimeters, so you could make this smaller if you wanted. Now, for FDM type 3D printers, I would definitely suggest making it larger. <laughs> I found when I tried to print this here at this size, when I tried to peel it off the bed, I just broke it up into pieces. So, you can scale it if you take the objects, go into draft. And then clone it. Then let's hide the original extrusion. I'm going to get rid of the grid. I'm going to go back over to part for the moment. Click on the clone and say you wanted it larger. So I'm going to make it making it three times as big as it was on all three axes. And so now, if I go from this point over to this point, it's now 250 millimeters. So, if I was going to try to print a sign for like my desk or something, I might add a cylinder or something else that extrudes out of maybe where the T is so that it has uh, something I can lean it up against. But for right now, I'm just going to I export this out as an STL. Well, actually, first I'll save. And I'll call it my sign. What is that? There's only two things here. And then export. Sign. Sorry, this new mouse I got, I don't think it is very goofy. Um, okay, and then we're going to close that. And I always suggest running anything you do through NetFab Basic.
can see it's got a problem. It's detecting some issue. So click the little red cross, go automatic repair, execute the defaults, apply repair, remove old part, and then no more problem. Part, export part, STL. I usually leave the default repaired. Say save. And then that STL file is good to go on your 3D printer. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.